Hi guys and welcome to the second part of this tutorial for getting first person weapons into um, the CryEngine 3 SDK. Um, there's just a few things that are worth noting as well. Um, I'm going to be using, well I am using for this, I'm using 3.4.0 um, of um, the SDK, the free SDK, um, just in case, I don't know, you guys watch this later on down the line and you know, things have been updated or you're using an earlier version. Um, okay, so what we're going to have a look at in this tutorial, this part of the tutorial, shall I say, is uh, we're going to have a look at exporting our weapon uh, for use within. Um, with it for use within the uh, the engine, and we're also going to have a look at um, setting up the various files that are required so that the you know engine can find our, our weapon and allow us to to actually use it. Um, another thing as well, I just wanted to explain a couple of bits about this this setup here. This 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 camera one here is actually how it will appear within, or is a you know a representation of how your weapon should look uh, within within the engine as well. So you know you you want to be having a look at this before you you know start exporting things or you know having a, with your animations as well. Probably worthwhile playing your animations in here later on, but I'll fully explain that later on. Okay, so first things first. What we're going to do is we actually need to get our files and folders set up. So for this, um, I'm just going to go into the into my my build here. Uh, I'm just going to get a game. Um, objects and then to weapons and then here I'm just going to create a new folder uh, called Uzi Silenced just like that so within here I'm just going to put a couple of extra folders as well I'm just going to have one called textures um, which I'm going to put all my textures in a second and then I'm going to have another one here which is going to be called oh, excuse me uh, max files um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just quickly go into here, file, save as. I'm just going to find um, find that directory. Just give me a sec. <laughs> Computer's just uh, having a good think about that for some reason. Um, if I go to game and go to objects, weapons, silenced, we'll just call this Uzi. Within max files, Uzi, silenced like that. We give that a save. Okay. Um, okay. So what what we're going to do now? I'm just going to give that a quick save. Should have our max file in here. Um, I just need to copy across from the completed Uzi objects, weapons, Uzi SMG textures. I just grab all those. I'm just going to copy those into uh, into that textures folder right there. Okay. So we've now got all of our textures in there as well. Now I'm just going to reuse the the files that, that I know work and from my uh, my own uh, Uzi. Um, so first things we just need to go into uh, objects, weapons, Uzi SMG. We're going to want to grab. We don't need the MTL at the moment, which is the material file. Uh, we'll we'll actually create that from Max uh, in conjunction with Sandbox in a short while. Um, it'll actually be a little uh, little part of this tutorial. I think I'll do on that um, just in case you guys want to know how to do it. Um, we need the ATL, the CDF, and the CHR params file. So I'm just going to copy those across just for now. Um, now, some of these files, I mean, especially there's this attachments file which um, is for uh, attachments, um, which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial, but I believe it's required. Um, I had a bit of an error when I was making my own, um, which was, I think, because I'd removed this file. Um, I'm actually well, it's I'm I'm going to leave it in there anyway, um, because I'm obviously going to want to do some work with attachments later on down the line. So, the CDF file uh, you actually can generate uh, internally from the um, from the uh, from Sandbox, um, and that's created through the the character editor. Um, it allows you to define uh, things such as I mean, if I just open it up, I'm using context as well, guys, for editing my stuff, but that's not you know it's not a requirement. You can use any kind of text editor, I believe. Um, this this character definition file um, it allows you it basically um, it determines which which CHR uh, which we'll, we're actually going to export in a minute um, which CHR to use uh, which material we want to use and then it asks us you know which uh, which rig we want to use for the first person arms um, that's also duplicated as well to some extent some of these bits are should I say uh, within uh, the XML file, I believe it's 
just the the, C, the CHR, what CGF files we want to use, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, if we just um, yeah, I'm just going to close that just for now, and then all we want to do, I'm just going to rename these quickly so that uh, so that we've got them ready. There we go. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open all three of those just quickly. I'm just going to go in and edit them in a moment. Okay. First of all, I'm just going to export my weapon. So we're actually going to want to, with the weapon selected, go to um, our tools here. Go to the CryEngine 3 exporter. If you don't have this for any reason, um, there is. Uh, quite comprehensive documentation on how to get all these exporters set up uh, within the uh, free SDK documentation. Uh, if you have a look in there, you'll be able to find it. Um, what we need to do is actually pick our object. So we need to click pick, click on that, we should get Uzi Silence, which is the same name as the mesh. And what we want to do is have the export set to a CHR. Um, custom file name I don't want, I want, to, want it to call it the same name as the object. So all we need to do now is just click export nodes and that should export that for us. So if we have a look inside of our max files we should have that CHR file so I'm just going to cut that and I'm just going to paste that into there. And then I'm just going to flick over to context and we need to start making sure that uh, we've actually got the fold all the folders that we need set up um, and all the right um, naming conventions are used throughout these files. Um, so to begin with, I'm just having a look in here. Now this this Uzi um, silenced CHR params file, this contains a list of all of the required animations um, that you're going to have to create. Some of them I didn't actually make myself because I mean, they're the customised ones which I'm going to come on to later which I think deals with um, attachments so when you want to change out the different types of sites or silences, that kind of thing. Um, so there's, there's something here that you'll, you'll start to understand what you need. Um, because if you haven't got a particular animation and it's trying to use it, it will tell you in the console within Sandbox um, which animation isn't either playing properly or isn't isn't there. So what we need to do is, first of all, we need to have an anim a folder for our actual animations. Um, I know what I'm going to call it. Um, I'm just going to call it Uzi SMG Silenced. Um, and then this is a DBA file or a Davis file which we're not going to actually have either because um, but I'm just going to pop, pop that in there. We're just going to go and grab this, go and grab this, put this folder in. So if I go into here then go to game animations first person I've actually got a folder already set up which I was playing about with earlier on. Um, so yeah, we've got this folder in there. You just need to create that folder. So you'll you'll just create a new empty folder within um, animations first person, Uzi silenced, um, and then that's that's that. Now it's worthwhile as well. Um, we'll have to come back to this file, this animations.cba file later on when I come to do um, when I come to export the animations in one of the later tutorials. So we'll come back to that later. We'll have a look at that because we need to put an entry in there. Um, but yeah, for now, all we need to do is just make sure that we've got that in there. These are both, uh, these, this is pointing to the right place. Um, uh, let's make sure that you just want to just double check each time uh, that you've uh, updated these files with the correct um, uh, with the correct names. You haven't made any spelling errors like I have. <laughs> um, so yeah, you should have silenced, easy silenced. Yeah, I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard actually, so that I've got the uh, the right name in there. So I'm not making any more silly typos. So yeah, I'm just going to give that a save. Pop in here. Now we're going to create our own material. I'm going to call our material Uzi um, Silenced Mat, and I'll sort that out later. I'm going to create one of those later on to make sure that all the folders are called the correct things as well. Um, and we're going to want to do the same here with all of these. So we will actually get when we when we test this in a second sandbox. It won't come up with a. It'll just come up with the red reference material, just saying that it can't find um, can't find the material because we haven't created it yet. Um, so yeah, we just need to make sure that all these are pointing to the right kind of place. 
Um, same with this ATL file as well. Um, that's all fine. So just make sure all these are saved. Um, and that just have a double check over them again just to make sure you haven't made any typos or you haven't missed anything out. Um, and that's looking okay to be honest. I'm just going to close that. So that's all of our all of our files sorted here. I'm just going to leave these up actually and then I should be able to find them in a second. Next thing to do is we actually need to create our XML file. Um, again I'm just going to, for this, I'm just going to grab our My Uzi content folder um, that you guys should have downloaded. Um, there should be in the wrong place entirely. Scripts, entities, items, XML, weapons. I'm just going to grab that. I should pop that on my desktop just for a second. I'm just going to rename it. Like that. I'm just going to close that folder out there. All I need to do is just go into my CryEngine build again. Go to game. Scripts, entities, items, XML, weapons. Pop this in here. Then we're just going to edit this as well because there's some some entries in here that we need to change. Now, this controls um, a lot more of how the weapon behaves. Um, what we need to do is make sure that we give the item a name. So in our case, we're going to want to call that uh, Uzi Silenced, like that. Um, then the next thing we're going to want to make sure is that we've got all of the correct um, folders and files being um, referred to. Now I'm actually putting the same mesh for my first person as my third person which isn't going to work. Um, it's also highly inefficient so you would want to go and have a look at creating a third person um, weapon, which I might do a tutorial on later on. I'm actually in the process of sorting that out for my weapon at the moment. Um, so as soon as I've, I've finished my own, I will do a tutorial about that later on so that we can actually pop that in there. It's just so we don't get it screaming out of any errors. Give that a quick save. If we scroll down here now, um, what we will actually notice is I've actually put, I've actually got 9mm um, empty casings shooting out the side of my uh, my weapon. And it's referring to um, a particle um, which you guys won't have access to. Um, so all you want to do is just grab um, this one here, um, just paste that in, but you need to make a quick change on the end. You need to change that to FP for first person, which means you'll get the 5.56 empty casings flying out. Um, I might do a tutorial later on again on how to create uh, your own particle for it so you can have 9mm casings coming out, which will be useful for, I mean, I say the 9mm, I mean they could be for any kind of small kind of um, handgun sized or submachine gun sized bullet, so you know like 0.45 or something like that, just change the scale of them slightly. Um, so yeah, you just just give that a quick save. Um, you can also change an awful lot of stuff in here. I, I gave my gun a fire rate of 600 rounds, which I believe is right for an Uzi, though I am no firearms expert. I'm just going to give this a crazy rate of fire, like 950 rounds. Um, you can change the amount of time it takes to reload, the amount of bullets you get in the chamber, all that kind of stuff um, in here. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do, I'm just going to just going to give that a quick save. So we should get quite a, like quite a fast rate of fire on that. Um, that should now be everything that we need um, for uh, to get our weapon working. So all I'm going to do now. Um, is I'm just going to have a quick go at getting this to work in sandbox, um, and hopefully that should be it. There shouldn't be there won't be any animations on it yet, um, but we should be able to see the weapon without any kind of material on it. But it's just good to just check at this early stage that we've got the weapon actually in a state that it could be used um, in the engine. A good way to check to see whether or not you can see it actually is if you go to game, edit equipment packs. Yeah, we've got Uzi silenced in here. So I'm just going to go down to, well, I'll do that in a second. Um, just going to open up the forest map. Um, just give my computer a second to, uh, to have a think. And then we'll just give this, a, just give it a try in, um, 
in sandbox just to see whether or not we can see it hopefully we'll have some kind of bright red weapon um, in here just going to turn my sounds off quickly and the display info I don't need that um, if I just go to game put it equipment packs and go down to single player uh, Easy Silenced is already in there um, so that's pretty familiar on so if I just jump in there we go you can see it's our lovely um, yeah it's got a crazy rate of fire on it as well um, but you can see that it is actually ejecting casings um, and even though it's bright red at the moment um, you can see that we've got this this weapon in here um, working um, so the next thing to do is we're just going to create a material for this get our material working on it um, and then we'll have a look at exporting like or create an idle animation I think um, it won't be fantastic but it will be an idle animation so at least he'll be stood there holding his weapon properly rather than you know uh, like he is at the moment with it floating in front of him but yeah we've got got it working anyway so right that's that's that then so that's that's how to export it so that's getting your so far we've covered skinning uh, we've covered um, actually getting the weapon exported um, and getting the files the relevant files set up for it um, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a look at creating a material.